I ran through the campus marshes until I made it to the theater of Pompeii. It was the biggest theater in Rome and it had been built 11 years ago to honor one of its biggest generals. By the time I got there, I was too late. There were crowds of people trying to get into and out of the theater. Some of them looked terrified. Some of them were pretty happy. I saw Marcus Junius Brutus close by. He looked like one of the happy ones, so I grabbed him for questioning. Okay, Brutus, it doesn't look like an ordinary Senate meeting. What's going on? We freed the Roman people from a tyrant. That's what's going on. Freed the Roman people? What do you mean? When Caesar came in to meet with us senators, Tilius Kimber knelt in front of him and took hold of his toga. Then Servius Casca came up, and so did Gaius Cassius Longinus, and so did I. Then we started stabbing him. We hid daggers in our togas and in boxes. Caesar tried to fight back, but after the first few wounds he gave up. He wrapped his purple toga around his head and then he fell to the floor. He bled to death in front of a statue of Pompey. So you admit it? You killed Caesar? Well, there were about 30 of us. Cassius and I led the way, but there were plenty of other senators who helped. We care about the Republic. That's what we want, you see? To restore the Republic. It hurts me to have hurt Caesar. He was a great man, but his ambition was just too much. He looked like he wanted to become king, or even be worshipped as a god. We can't have that in Rome. We kicked the kings out long ago, and we're not going back. What are you saying, Brutus? Caesar didn't want to become king? He didn't want to be worshipped as a god? That's Marcus Antonius, one of Caesar's allies. With Caesar dead, Antonius is in charge of the city of Rome. Don't you remember the Lupercalia last month? It was when Caesar was named Dictator Perpetuus. He appeared in public, dressed in his purple toga. I came up to him, and I offered him a diadem. That's a crown. It's a symbol of kingship. But he refused it. So I offered it to him again. But he refused it. So I offered it to him again. And he still refused it. Three times. So how can you say he wanted to become king? You're wrong, Antonius. Caesar still wanted to increase his wealth and power. He invaded Italy himself. He had become too ambitious for his own good and for the good of Rome. We're better off with him gone and we're better off with a republic. Oh, you're a fool, Brutus. Do you think killing one man is gonna restore the republic? Do you have the army or the money or the resources to do it? Of course not. We've had years of civil war. We can't just go back to the way things were when our fathers were alive. No, no. Things are going to get very ugly before they get any better. I wasn't sure who to believe, but I had a hunch Antonius was right, at least about things getting ugly. Caesar's heir, Octavius, was in Greece studying rhetoric. He might try to return to Rome and claim Julius Caesar's legacy. If he did, who would follow him? But Antonius was a very ambitious man himself, and he might try to seize power too. I also had a hunch that he might try to gain control of Egypt, which would make him a pretty tough enemy. And then Brutus and Cassius were sure to raise an army to defend their cause of restoring the Republic. It looked like we might be in for another civil war. But I wasn't going to hang around the theater of Pompeii any longer. I had to get back to my office and break the news to Calpurnia and the priests. What a crazy city, huh? Roma and Sana, I like to call it. Roma and Sana. <laughs>